Uh, good day. My name is Kevin Wims. Uh, my company is Wims Engineering Limited. Uh, we are in our 40th year of producing machinery for the food industry. Um, typically the, uh, the bakery, uh, fresh cream, uh, sugar confectionery uh, industry where we have produced produce machines for the likes of Mondelez and Bacabar, uh, as well as PepsiCo uh, and all sorts of um, internationally recognised names. Um, we deal with um, the chocolate industry, um, we deal with aerated chocolate, we also deal with light and delicate masses such as fresh cream, uh, but also quite viscous masses like caramels and jams and jellies. Um, anything that you'd like to deposit onto a, a process line, so maybe a, a, a batter onto a, a steel oven band uh, or a chocolate into a chocolate mould, um, then these are the things that we do. Um, we have our own design uh, uh, house, uh, our own internal design. We have our own internal production and workshop environment. Uh, but also we write the code and the software and panel build. So also uh, inside the company. Um, we install and commission all machines ourselves. Uh, and uh, so it's really cra cradle to grave. We, we take a project on uh, and we see it all the way through. Uh, to the very end uh, with our own engineers and our own design team and our own commissioning engineers. Um, if I was able to just show a few videos of some of our examples and I can uh, it would better illustrate what we actually do. These are some examples of depositing technologies that we do. So on the top left hand there is aerated chocolate, on the bottom right hand there is uh, an aerated batter such as uh, a rusk or a um, sponge base. Um, all these you will notice uh, are under pressure so there's no hoppers involved in any of the depositors. Um, so it's a very clean environment uh, we can produce very high production rates. Typically the one on the bottom left there is producing 900,000 deposits an hour. Uh, but then also with very high accuracy, so the bottom right uh, is showing a chocolate uh, deposit into a mould uh, and then that is an extremely accurate deposit. Uh, obviously with chocolate it's an, an extremely um, expensive product that needs to be uh, kept clean or the moulds kept clean, no dripping, so we're able to uh, accurately dispense into each mould either intermittently uh, or continuously up to 40 moulds a minute. Um, there is also in the bakery industry um, on the bottom left that is what's called a biscotti biscuit, a very popular product in the Eastern Europe. Um, and the top right there is a, a sponge cake deposit into a baking pan. So our first stage of that was to put this, the raw batter into the uh, the trays before uh, depositing, uh, before baking, sorry. Uh, and then the second stage here after cooling, then we were injecting uh, a fat cream or a sugar cream um, inside the, uh, the cell structure of the, um, the sponge. Uh, on the top left there, you can see uh, one of our fresh cream makeup lines. So this particular one is making um, donuts. So uh, there's a, a jam stripe on the bottom of the cut, uh, cut donut and then we interpolate the nozzle to make uh, a deposit. The bottom right there is quite a famous product, a uh, marshmallow product for um, uh, an American customer uh, and with the movement of the mechanism and with the open and close and the pressure uh, balancing inside the manifold we're able to produce um, up to 800 kilograms an hour of uh, marshmallow deposits and all those products are exactly the same, uh, good weight accuracy um, and just mimicking what you would typically do uh, with a piping bag um, to make some type of shape. Um, again there is uh, many different um, examples there so you can see the top 
right one is a uh, very famous again marshmallow or egg album um, marshmallow uh, deposit onto a wafer base so we're indexing out the biscuits from a magazine or they could be in line from the oven um, and then we're targeting those uh, biscuit or wafer bases and then depositing onto them uh, this will then go on to on processing maybe covered in chocolate or being covered in um, uh, coconut um, but certainly our, our production our, our method is part of a processing line so it could be part of an oven it could be part of um, a biscuit uh, factory or a biscuit plant uh, just like the one on the top right there with the jam so that's a um, jaffa cake or just sorry a jammy dodger uh, the top left there is a very famous product in the UK called the party ring and we laminate the icing on the top of those and we manage the icing through our pumps uh, we filter the icing uh, and dispense five different colors uh, onto uh, the band so all that excess icing around the outside is reclaimed filtered and then sent back to the head again uh, the bottom right there is also uh, an ice cream deposit so directly from uh, an ice cream making machine we're able to make many different types of shapes just by changing the controls uh, on the machine um, and um, can they even have an inclusion inside so a, a jam inclusion uh, inside that same deposit uh, this example is uh, for a deposited and extruded marshmallow line that we recently uh, supplied so in this instance, we have a marshmallow line, which is the conveyor that is running from right to left on the uh, example picture here. Uh, you will see on the left, there is uh, a large uh, overhead cabinet, which is the depositor. Now this houses a uh, uh, pressurized manifold to deposit multiple colors of marshmallow uh, onto a, a moving band. Um, and behind that as well, there is a, a rotary twist extruder. So a combination line that will give uh, both deposited mallow and also uh, rope extruded mallow. Uh, this is a typical example of that line. So in the far distance, you would be able to see the depositor. And then there's typically about 20 to 25 meters of conveyor uh, to allow the marshmallow to age and condition um, just enough time for it to have another starch sprinkle onto the top from this unit on the left hand side of the picture uh, and then after that there will also be a, a guillotine uh, to cut the ropes uh, into lengths and then after that stage they are collected into baskets um, and then aged for maybe five to six hours uh, before packaging um, there are other techniques where um, the conveyor can be serpentine so it could be put on multi levels uh, so it's continuously aged and then you can go straight to packaging afterwards uh, so that's the whole line from the other view and this is the uh, the depositor as we can see there so there's a top sprinkler uh, of, of starch to cover the belt of the conveyor and that's just to obviously stop the, the sticky marshmallow uh, adhering to the belt and then it comes to um, this stage here where a rotary twist extruder could be attached in this instance it's away from the machine and we will be depositing uh, spot deposit marshmallows onto the conveyor with this large machine on the left they can be added to existing lines as well as uh, new installations so we would just produce the uh, uh, overall framework to mount to an, ex an existing conveyor um, this is an example of the rotary twist extruder. Um, we've got a uh, vertical adjustment and rotary twist adjustment. Uh, we can uh, have different nozzle shapes and sizes. So this is the spot deposit. So we can have multiple colors of marshmallow. We can have a, a jam or a sauce inclusion inside that deposit. Uh, because marshmallows uh, are generic uh, um, 
the recipe. Uh, it can be uh, added to with certain things, but really there's no flavour to the marshmallow. Uh, so to give it uh, an extra selling point, uh, we typically try to put different shapes to the marshmallow or maybe different colours um, to make it more attractive. Um, so here on the same line was yeah, what we called a, a hamburger. It's uh, not quite the right colours for a hamburger, but um, if you can imagine, there was a brown and top and a brown bottom uh, and a, a darker colour for the, the meat in the middle. Um, this is one product that we produce for this particular customer. Um, this is an example of, as I mentioned before, the extruded marshmallow. So long lines of Mallow would be like sent down the line and aged on that 25 millimeter, 25 meter conveyor. Uh, then they would be cut into small sections and then they would be collected into baskets uh, and aged for a period of time, just like this. There is uh, an example of a marshmallow uh, rotary twist extruder. I'm just going to play the video now. So this is the different types of spot deposit. These are the BMWs. And this is the example of the drawing of what we've just been explaining. So you can see how this is white marshmallow or different colour marshmallows. So we've got two separate heads depositing the marshmallow onto the, the conveyor belt. So typically the throughput of a deposited marshmallow is less than on the extruded marshmallow just because with a deposited marshmallow you're not populating the belt uh, as much. Uh, this is the example of the rotary twist. This is with the nozzles off, various different change part nozzles to give different shapes, teddy bear faces or a rotary twist like a rope. So we've got four separate colours coming out of um, those nozzles and uh, with a twisting motion onto the nozzles then they'd be able to produce well, what in the UK we call a flump but um, these, these are typical products around the world. This can be um, aged for uh, slightly less time than a deposited marshmallow. Uh, Sometimes you deposit this marshmallow at maybe 55 degrees, so it needs time to um, condition and cool down slightly. As I mentioned, you can also go through a continuous aging conveyor and then you'll be able to flow pack or pack um, uh, immediately after the aging. You can see the, the base of the conveyor. There is a bed of starch onto the conveyor there. Uh, and as you can imagine, it's still sticky, so after 25 metres there will still be uh, a sprinkle of starch onto the top of those ropes uh, to aid the cutting so it doesn't, there's the, uh, the blade doesn't stick to the cutting. Uh, another example uh, of some very popular products that we uh, produce the machines for is the Jaffa Cake. Um, these can come in either the standard Jaffa Cake, uh, individual uh, round biscuits, not cakes, uh, or they can come as a, a Jaffa Cake bar. Uh, in both instances, uh, there's many different uh, levels to this. So there's the sponge that has to be an exactly the right size uh, and, and weight and accuracy. Um, this has a, a, a huge effect to uh, all the processes further down the line. Uh, how centred the jam is into the uh, into the uh, the biscuit after the baking, um, how well it goes through the chocolate in rover, how well it goes through the um, the packaging machines. Um, as you can appreciate, it's a live product; it's a sponge, so uh, it's not as easy to get completely round and completely flat and completely the right weight as it would for uh, a rotary moulded biscuit. Um, so it's quite a live product, so to get a tolerance of one or two millimetres in diameter is absolutely sacrosanct for uh, a Jaffa Cake uh, production line. And we've got uh, many of these lines that have been running for decades in, um, in various factories around the world. And it's a 
Right, even though it's a UK product, uh, it's a very popular uh, all over. So uh, the first stage is uh, to deposit the batter onto the beginning of the steel band. Uh, and we do this either in a traditional way with a, a pressurized manifold. The depositor motion is underneath the uh, the oven band. So we can again mount these um, uh, depositors on an existing uh oven line or on a new installation, uh, we would fit the, the frame to suit. Uh, we also do the band release agent at the beginning of the line, as you can just see in the distance on that far left picture. Uh, so again, to get the right weight and consistency and the diameter, the band release agent is also a very important part. If you're too much band release or too thin, then the cake would spread. So we, even though you put in 5.8 grams of uh, batter on the band, it would spread and make a bigger cake or not. Uh, so it's, there's a, many different variables uh, at the beginning of the, the depositing stage. Um, on the right hand side there, you'll see for the Jaffa cake bar, then we can do a continuous wide sheet uh, of um, the, the same batter uh, and that will go through linear cutters and then put the jam on the top uh, as it shows there on the right hand picture. So a spot deposit uh, of Jaffa jam nicely centered in the middle of the biscuit so we would have uh, except those biscuits after the oven and they would have obviously traveled around the, uh, the factory so we would have to capture those biscuits, realign them, buffer them into a, a sensible amount, and then release them into the uh, the depositing stage nicely in rows. So we're able to get a, an accurate deposit in the middle. Um, same for the uh, the picture on the right, although I'll be static. Uh, we would put uh, a consistent uh, stripe of jam on the top of the cake bars, which would then uh, get cooled uh, and then cut into uh, individual cakes. Um, there's pectin's jam, pectin set uh, acid inside the jam. So again, it's a very important process, the jam deposit. So if you have too much pectin or too little, it, it won't set. Um, or if you have to want too much, then it would set inside the manifold. Um, all the manifolds are hot water jacketed to maintain a temperature of 60 degrees, 65 degrees inside the head that will allow that uh, product to flow uh, and then be deposited through the manifold. And then as it lowers to around about 55 degrees, then uh, the pectin would start setting um, after we've deposited. Um, so typically we can do this with a volumetric deposit uh, and we can uh, satisfy plus or minus 1% accuracy um, uh, on our depositing that, um, of jam. Uh, and we can run it uh, 60 plus cycles a minute with two manifold heads. So then you've got 120 rows a minute uh, of production. Um, so this is another example of uh, uh, what we do as a business. So we uh, take a process that somebody wants to do. Uh, they might have an existing process that they want to improve uh, or they might be setting up from scratch and they want to have uh, WIMS Engineering's um, uh, vast wealth of knowledge, uh, not to blow me on trump or our own trumpet, um, but our vast wealth of knowledge in many different areas of the confectionery industry. Um, so thank you for listening to uh, uh, WIMS Engineering and um, if you need any more information, uh, then please contact us through uh, uh, our email address or uh, website. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for delivering your presentation here at Confectionery Live and for such an eye-catching presentation. Um, you mentioned at the start that you've been in operation for 40 plus years, which is an amazing period of time. Um, in that time, how have you seen, have demands from your customers evolved? Have they changed? What main demands are you seeing at the moment? 
Uh, yeah, well, when we first started all those years ago, um, a lot of the decision making tree was centered around the uh, the factories themselves. So uh, all the engineering decisions were made typically by the local engineering teams. Um, they could sometimes uh, choose what products they wanted to develop and make. Uh, whereas now it's more sometimes become more centralized. You're dealing with uh, more project managers in um, uh, international teams, uh, certainly become much more international. Um, um, so that, hence we went to uh, all the shows like Interpac just recently, uh, met with many different project managers uh, who have got um, uh, projects that we would like to get involved in. So these things can take time. So a project lifestyle, life span um, is usually longer than it used to be. Um, because you have to go through so many tiers uh, of, of management and, and different departments. Um, so, yeah, I can, we see that as being one of the, the, the differences in the last few years. Have you seen greater demand for automated solutions? Um, Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, our machine is uh, an automated machine anyway. Uh, it, it has to be. That's that's what it does uh, for the last 40 years. But we've gone from uh, making our own controls, uh, uh, black boxes, um, and then using all the industry recognized um, uh, controls like Alan Bradley or Siemens. Um, but then the smart workshop has also become uh, more prevalent. So we've also been um, putting more and more into the controls, um, giving more data to the operators, giving more data to the factory networks. Um, we've been given, um, uh, in some instances, we're allowed control of the machine remotely. So we're able to support the machine remotely. Um, so those are the points that we um, have you know, like organically grown uh, over the last few years. I mean, com companies have asked us to do small bits. We've not done it uh, as part of a, an ethos. It's not Factory 4.0, but it's 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 naturally grown because uh, the customer demands it um, from now on. Yeah. I, th I think that's a really good point about data. People want more data and they want to understand as much as they can about their process to get smarter. It feels like there's a real... Mm -hmm. There's a real trend towards that. Um, when we look at the last few years, um, there have been so many different challenges for those working in the confectionery sector. So could you talk briefly about the challenges that you have faced as a business? Uh, well, uh, apart from the obvious, uh, we've had uh, um, plenty of uh, staffing challenges. Uh, people have um, uh, people move, but then we also have to replace those people. So um, uh, we've taken an ethos of like home growing our own staff, uh, our own skills. So typically the, the internal workforce have come through the ranks um, um, from maybe the workshop or the design design house. Uh, and then typically they might be uh, gone into uh, another role, uh, such as uh, creating the code for the controls or uh, installing and commissioning the machines. So, yes, um, keeping a, a good quality staff uh, has been one of the challenges. Um, of course, this, uh, with a family run business, we've got uh, uh, myself, my brother and my father still in the business. So we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, but yeah, having a, a good quality um, uh, commissioning uh, staff is we find is absolutely paramount. We don't try and subcontract that work out. Um, uh, it's an industry normal to have that um, and have um, various uh, subcontracted uh, engineering support staff, but we don't believe that's the way. We need to be able to uh, support our own machines. Mm. You're, you're soldiering on. I hear yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was I was really struck in the presentation um, watching the depositors at work and the the multi-head depositors and the different colours for marshmallows and and products that are quite delicate. How are you ensuring hygiene and sanitation in your solutions, um, which is so key, of course? Um, well, uh, as part of a, a cleaning regime, so like cleaning in place, CIP, that um, every factory uh, really does have uh, nowadays. Um, so we're 
totally part of that because all our depositors and manifolds they've always been the, the, an ethos of, of being a closed system there's no open hoppers there's no product in atmosphere uh, apart from when it comes out of the nozzle so it's inherently a, um, a, a suitable design to um, mount uh, or be included into the CIP rate, uh, routine so if there's a, a mixing system or a, um, an aeration system before our depositor, um, then that would typically have a, its own CIP flush system. Um, and then we would simply uh, be, be part of that system. So all that pipe work to our machine could be um, uh, flushed through as well. Through, um, and then we've got different techniques with the machine to um, handshake with the, uh, the feed system so uh, we can build up uh, a regime so it doesn't mean it means that uh, if it's a marshmallow then it needs a, a certain amount of time with a certain amount of uh, water uh, then it needs caustic so solution solution caustic soda solution then maybe um, uh, another flush uh, to get rid of the caustic soda and then a, an air blow so there's all these uh, techniques that uh, can be uh, utilised uh, with our flow system. Uh, and then materials uh, that we use, everything's uh, FDA approved. Uh, if it's an aluminium construction, typically we anodise it, but we see that a lot of our machines at the moment are going towards uh, titanium construction or, or stainless steel. Um, and that just means that they will last um, not forever. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Kevin for taking the time to speak with me and for sharing all of your expertise and know-how. Um, if anyone has any questions, as mentioned, please do reach out to him. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.